Well, I think it helps it helps in public outreach because we do weekly public shows and it helps uh, with the students uh, astronomy program but we also have some videos that we haven't shown yet full dome videos uh, that can be bought and can be used for other disciplines plus they're also developing a uh, a uh, program for um, geology that can be used in the dome so um, astronomy miners are greatly benefited by this and we have a strong astronomy minor program which has grown from uh, two to four students uh, ten years ago as now we have twelve this year so the, the program is growing uh, we could use some more staff but we don't have that yet um, but uh, the astronomy program is good and this again is great public outreach for the college because a lot of people just come to see the show we do week weekly public shows that are free and open to the public and so they get a better sense of, uh, of what's going on on the Sweet Gold campus. Uh, there's a few opportunities. Uh, one is they can see more stuff, they can visualize more things talked about in astronomy classes and again this can eventually uh, be used in other STEM classes, you know, science, technology, uh, and uh, math and stuff like that. Um, but uh, another thing is uh, Astronomy Club has made use of the planetarium on a regular basis and uh, we're in the process, we would like to offer a course in teaching how to use the planetarium which would be great for education majors that may go off to a school with a planetarium. Uh, the digital planetarium we have now is the wave of the future so we're riding the wave of the 21st century planetariums and um, again the problem with offering that course is we have limited staff that has been cut down the past uh, 20 years uh, from two full time to down to one, one full time. Now we're sort of one and a half full time. Uh, so we just barely have enough staff to offer the routine and regular astronomy minor courses to offer a planetarium course which is a little bit outside the realm of just astronomy minor. It's more of a mix of astronomy and education uh, and you could call it communications and public outreach. Um, to offer that course uh, along with the other courses I think we, we still need more staff but uh, uh, we'll see what we can do. We may have to offer some courses in the summertime to uh, make sure that the astronomy program, the astronomy minor program is well accommodated as well as training people on the planetarium. Currently I'm training, uh, I've been training other faculty, uh, uh, adjuncts and full-time faculty and uh, we had, um, we also have a tech assistant who's an operator so we now have three operators who can give shows in the planetarium and uh, this semester we're bringing a couple students, uh, astronomy, uh, astronomy club officers and astronomy minors into the mix to see uh, how students do with the thing, but we're, uh, do with the planning of the, do with the training for the planetarium. Uh, but we're getting off to a slow start this semester because of the weather and because of other commitments. Uh, for example, our department's uh, interviewing for, for new candidate faculty positions, stuff like that. So. Uh, we hope to start that in March. Uh, this will be a second round of training. We did training all through the fall 2013. We'd like to do another three months training at the end of this semester. We do once a week. Now you have to realize, uh, you go back uh, to uh, 2000, there were no public shows. And the, the planetarium, the previous planetarium, has been around for 50 years. And there have been previous planetarium directors. It wasn't until around 2004, 2005, that I, the third planetarium director, decided that we should do public shows. And so it used to be the only shows you could do aside from class, classrooms was private shows. And private shows can be, uh, um, they can call a number, that's 343-4294, and arrange a private show. And this is for groups of 10 or more. Uh, we typically do many a semester. We're talking like Boy Scouts, senior citizen groups, of a local school classes, grade school classes, et cetera, et cetera. So in the past, we've typically done anywhere between five or ten of those each semester, and we'd like to get those numbers up again. This very first year, we're busy designing programs from scratch we're using brand new software that we're learning, uh, and uh, we have a good handle on it, but next year we'll have much more time for doing the private shows. We're starting the private shows. We've already done several this, this past five months. Uh, about maybe five to ten, but um, so it's not just weekly shows, public shows, but those are brand new. It's, it's only in the last ten years uh, under my uh, directorship that we've actually been doing weekly public shows free and open to the public. 
and previously it was just private shows and classroom shows. Classroom shows are pretty steady. At the beginning of the semester, sometimes towards the end of the semester, we have uh, two, or three, uh, astro uh, two or three astronomy professors that bring their classes to the planetarium. Uh, two of us know how to operate the planetarium at this point, and the other two will hopefully be on board by the end of the semester. Yeah, that would be great then. Uh, I've had, you know, for example, one who hasn't been fully trained on it, he brought his class in and he had me give a show. So that's another way to go. We do use it during the week. Uh, um, again, it could be uh, any kind of visiting group. We've uh, done mentoring scholars program. We've done uh, immigrant ed education uh, programs. We've done, um, uh, we've done some holiday season, you know, for the public programs. So we've done a variety of different programs. Uh, we've done the daycare center, the, the children's center. We've done a show for them. And so, and everybody seems to love the planetarium, so that's great. Okay, keep in mind, we've just made the most major improvement and change to the planetarium in the past 50 years, okay? Uh, we had the old planetarium, which could show you the sky from anywhere on Earth, and it was all done with mirrors and lenses and light bulbs. We now have a brand new planetarium that's digital, shows 1,600 pixels on the dome, and allows us to show the sky from anywhere. I can show the sky from Mars. I can show the sky from the edge of the universe. So, whereas before we were stuck on Earth and looking at plants as little tiny dots and showing occasional slides with a slide projector, now we can put slides anywhere we want in the dome. We can make them big or small. We can put quick time movies anywhere we want on the dome, make them big or small. And again, the software for demonstrating the sky allows us to fly through the universe, go from galaxy to galaxy, go hop from planet to planet. So I can fly off planet Earth and land on Mars or land on a moon of Jupiter if I want. And uh, so the opportunities are stupendous here. Now, as far as room for future improvement, again, this is a major investment already. So I'd say at this point, let's let it settle in. Let's see how much we can do with what we've done. But some uh, forward directions uh, a few years off, uh, we want to bring in more STEM, uh, STEM disciplines into the planetarium. As I said, right now we have Starry Night Dome, which is an astronomical program for showing the sky and the universe uh, from these seats. Uh, they do have uh, the same uh, software vendor, uh, Curriculum Innovation. Um, can, uh, they're developing a geology program called the Layered Earth. They already have it in, in production. And that allows you to go through different layers of the Earth and look at the ring of fire around the Pacific and things like that. They're working on a meteorology program. In each of these cases, including Starry Night Dome, there's a desktop version that can be used in the classroom and can be used in labs. So we have Starry Night Dome for the dome, and we have Starry Night College, uh, which we're beginning to start to, to see how, how, how potentially to use it in the classrooms or in the lab situation. So. Uh, and again, there are these commercially produced uh, full dome features. This is uh, like Hollywood production values and it feels more like an IMAX experience. Um, those films are not cheap. They cost, they, you get to rent them, rent them for 10 years and they cost $5,000 a pop. And so this is something that we're, we're not going to do cheap or easily. It's something we hope to budget for, but we won't do it all the time. We don't, don't want to go overboard. And to be perfectly honest, I think a lot of our own privately developed programs here on campus are more suited, more directed at what we want to tell the students, what we want to show the public. These commercially dome shows are like, you know, trying to please everybody at the same time. So they're not as specific or not as directed as shows that we produce locally. So I'd say in the planetarium, 90% of what you'll see from month to month. Each month we do a different show. We do the same show all month long. This, I'm talking about the Sunday public shows at 7 p.m. Um, I think those, those are you know like homegrown. It's local content, and that uh, makes it very exciting. And um, we can do the commercially produced shows, but I don't want that. I don't want to be that the primary planetarium experience where you come in and get in your seat, some planetary operator pushes a button and then goes to sleep for an hour while you watch a movie. If you want to do that, go to a movie theater. This is where we want to do live hosting, live demonstrations, interact with the audience, interact with students. Keep in mind, a live show 
is probably about 20, 30 minutes of live demonstrations where I'm running the menus, I'm running the buttons, and I'm turning things manually. Uh, and then uh, maybe you know, 15 to 20 minutes of each show is stuff that we script ahead of time and uh, make a little you know, nice fancy set piece of. But again, it's, it's fun to do that. Like the Moons of Jupiter, that's an educational video that I put together, and I've never seen that elsewhere. You know, it's and once I first saw it visually, I, I knew it'd be uh, be cool. But once I saw it visually, I said, "Whoa, that really works!" And that's a good discussion starter. You, know, you show the the orderly moons, and you show the chaotic moons, and people naturally wonder what's going on, and so that could lead to a good classroom discussion, and and that would be interactive rather than just somebody showing a show and the show tells you everything you need to know. Cosmic Void, where we uh, start from planet Earth. I'm showing off different coordinate systems. A coordinate system for the Earth's sky based on the Earth's spin axis, equator, north pole, south pole of the sky, rather than the Earth. And then we move off into the solar system where we use the, the ecliptic, the plane of Earth's orbit, which is pretty much the plane of the solar system. We use that as a coordinate system. And then we move out into the galaxy and now we're using the disk of the galaxy, the Milky Way, that band of light you see in the night sky, we're using that as the basis of our coordinate system. But the cool thing about that demonstration is the choice of music uh, and uh, also how when we change a coordinate system, coordinate system, we move around a lot and it gives you a sense of the three-dimensionality of the database behind the projections you're seeing on the sky. So you actually feel like you're flying through space rather than looking at static pictures. That cosmic voyage loop, that has been our crowd pleaser. It gets the biggest applause of all the things that we've put together. And uh, we're all working all the time to try to make better demonstrations. Tim LeClaire has done some good work, and uh, John Russell is doing some cool stuff with his classes. So we're all making, uh, and we're, again, we're training others to, to join in the, the fun. And so it's fun to put together a, a show and a topic and a demonstration that you think makes a difference with the students. Now I get it, whereas before I don't understand, I'm reading it, now I see it, ah, 